I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, your parents' methods as, uh, in your father's case, as a director as well as a performer, yeah. and in your mother's case as a performer. Um, there are some documents uh, of your father's performance at CBC. I haven't, uh, I haven't actually done a search or asked for a search to be done of the CBC archives of your mother's performance at all. Um, I get the impression that she didn't work as much as he did, at least in um, uh, on television. No, she didn't. Uh, she didn't do any television um, or, or radio either. She, uh, okay. her, her performance was were all all to, in the Shakespeare Festival. What can you tell us of her performance style? Uh, about the quality of her performance, you mean? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was, well, I was just growing up and, and um, uh, I wouldn't have known how to compare her with anybody else. Um, so that's the background. But um, I always thought that um, certainly in the earlier years when she was younger, uh, she was very good. Um, I think she had a natural ear for poetry. She was very musical herself. She was a concert pianist, as you probably know. She, she won a prize at the uh, Albert Hall when she was 20 years old. Mm. And um, a very talented musician. And she had an ear for music, ear for sound. And she spoke her lines very beautifully and um, often uh, would speak to, to me and, the, and my sisters about the beauty of poetry and how poet, poetry is a, is a wonderful art form. So she had a natural gift for poetry and it came across in the way she said her lines. Now, uh, unfo uh, unfortunately, I mean, she wanted to continue and I'm afraid she did continue past her her um, <laughs> used by date, if you like it. I mean, she was just too old to play uh, the roles that she that she would play, and and I think her, the quality of her performance declined as a result of that. Was it a self-consciously musical style that she used when she spoke? In other words, uh, was it um, uh, was it a theatrical vocal style? Was it was it at all mannered? Um, I wouldn't say uh, I wouldn't say mannered per se, but but uh, except if you say that all poetry is mannered, uh, uh, she spoke it and he did too, in a, a natural poetic way. But there was a there was a consciousness of the poetry in the lines. It, it wasn't just prose. It wasn't a communication of information or anything like that. There was there was a musicality that underlay it, but not but not a, an overt one. Not something that you would you would uh, observe as being um, mannered or artificial in any way. Okay. Be because the other side of the coin was, and this was driven uh, home to us um, a lot, uh, I remember it very distinctly, is just be natural. Uh, I mean, give the lines the meaning that the author wanted them to have. And uh, I remember being directed by my father in the plays. As you know, I, I played quite a number of roles. and, and uh, and Climaxing in Hamlet yes, in 1956 right. and 57, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, I played it first at Hart House, uh, directed by Robert Gill, and uh, and then um, uh, then my father asked me if I wanted to play it, and I, I said sure I would, uh, and it and uh, and uh, I found that a very interesting e experience. Because, uh, Robert Gill was a good good director, um, and um, uh, I think I benefited from his direction, but. But w uh, when I got to my father, it was, a, it was like a leap. It was a big jump up. Um, I, I didn't expect to be directed, quite frankly, because I'd, I'd done the part. Mm -hmm. And I uh, thought, well, well, I'd do it the same way. But I w wasn't allowed to do it the same way because it wasn't good enough. I had to what, move up uh, what sort uh, of a level. And he, he, I remember many conversations. And sometimes there would be um, a few sparks there. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I mean, you, and, and always it would be yes, be natural, and get the meaning out. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, any... be heard. I mean, uh, he was very strong in diction. Uh, you had to be heard. It's so open air, so you needed to be. Mm -hmm. You had to be uh, uh, well understood by the back row. So there was a declamatory element, perhaps. There was a slower cadence than would be the case in uh, a more intimate theater. And certainly completely different from television or, or radio where you, you almost whisper. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had to, um, you had to get your, your voice out. You had to speak from the diaphragm. We often would, would be told that. It's, 
let, let the voice come from the diaphragm so that it's sonorous. But the phrase was letting the voice come. Yes. Right. No, not forcing in any way. Right. No, 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 absolutely not. Because uh, there were cases, uh, in fact, I remember, uh, now that you mention it, uh, uh, Father saying to, to actors, look, you're, you're shouting, you're, um, uh, you're forcing your voice. You don't do that. Um, so as a director, then, did he, uh, would you say that he had uh, more of a tendency to go for the sense, uh, the, the sort of literary sense of the lines, or was he uh, considering no. more emotions? Uh, did he talk uh, much about uh, the subtextual relationships between characters? Okay, well, the first question on the literary side, he was against all of that. He was against that. Uh, he considered that to be um, uh, contrived or academic. Uh, he wasn't too complimentary about the world of academe. <laughs> oh, oh, really? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, they, because he was very much a natural uh, uh, oriented person. Okay. He wanted, because he saw Shakespeare as a genius at human psychology. And that, and that uh, the psychological uh, tensions and relationships that Shakespeare was talking about are exactly the same as we have today. And, that's, and that he kept saying, that's why Shakespeare will be alive forever, until human nature changes. As long as it doesn't change, Shakespeare's going to be relevant. So uh, you, you've got to get that across. Mm -hmm. um, a literary approach somehow becomes too dry. It, it fails that test, if you like. Uh, so then uh, did he focus more on the characters' emotional lives or on their relationships? Uh, well, on both. Mm -hmm. on both. I mean, the emotions were, were very important. Uh, important. Um, uh, but the, the actual meaning was paramount. In other words, when, when somebody says a line, what does he really mean by saying it? Not just a nice sounding line, not just beautiful words, mm -hmm. but it's meant to mean something and the actor has got to get that meaning across. And I remember being stopped many, many times by my father on, on several roles, others were too, mm -hmm. uh, where, where he said, look, um, he always called me Anthony. <laughs> it's, Anthony, you haven't got the meaning. <laughs> Get the meaning. <laughs> and then I'd say, well, oh, what is the meaning? And then he'd say what the meaning is, uh, if, if I were confused on that subject. Uh, but often it was just because I wasn't uh, um, paying enough attention to, uh, to the meaning. And, and, so uh, that if one lapsed back into a generalized form of delivery as a way of getting you back in the moment, as it were, he would use the... Uh, he would use the, the meaning or the sense of the line. Yeah, well that's, uh, that's the important thing and, uh, and of course to get the meaning you've got to understand a bit about the character. I mean, why is he saying this? And, and he would talk about that. Uh, and the, so he emphasized intention? The tensions between the characters. Uh, um, you know, why, why is he angry? Uh, or um, you know, why does she feel this particular way? Why does she feel love for this character? Uh, what's the background? Uh, he was very good at all of that. Did he talk much in terms of, um, uh, well, spines of a character, for example, to borrow a term from uh, the method school? Did he uh, talk about... He wasn't keen on the method. No? Uh, no. I mean, that was just coming in. Mm -hmm. That was sort of... Um, well, that's why I'm wondering uh, if... Uh, he, after he his time, it, it was contemporary, but, but in his formative years, there, um, Stanislavski wasn't really a figure, I think, in, in English theater. He became uh, later on. So he was not, um, I think he, he felt there was a certain artificiality and, and um, contriving in, in the method, and he wouldn't have been in favor of it. Uh, I think it was sort of, he felt it was a bit self-conscious, and, and um, uh, it was, it was a, a way for directors and, art, and, art, and actors to promote themselves, mm -hmm. as if they'd... Uh, suddenly discovered uh, the holy grail of acting and nobody else knew it but they did. It was that sort of attitude. Uh, not necessarily, I wouldn't say he was necessarily right, but, but that was his attitude. But it was largely because it was new, I think. Mm -hmm. Now, as a director, uh, I'm, I've been told that he sometimes made sketches of blocking notes beforehand while he was uh, yes, he cutting did. Cutting and adapting the plays. Oh yeah, he, he had, always had a prompt book mm -hmm. uh, with with all the. Th he he would um, 
he would buy um, um, a paperback copy of, uh, of the play, mm -hmm. which you could do for a very cheap price in those days, and he'd cut out each page and, and he'd paste it on a loose leaf binder folder. And then he would write uh, uh, things on it, yes. Would he make complete notes before going into rehearsals with a production, or would he um, make uh, just uh, some and then fill in the blanks when he got into rehearsals? The, the latter, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, he was, um, uh, yeah, it was quite spontaneous. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, the play would evolve and he would be part of that evolution. How thoroughly would the play be blocked before it went up? Pretty thoroughly. Yeah? Yeah, pretty thoroughly, yeah. Because he a lot of the reviews complain I know, they complain about, about the uh, actors wandering around getting in, in their way. Getting in each but other's way. And the, I was the, surprised to, uh, to uh, read that, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Uh, I'm not saying it didn't happen, but I don't think it, w it was usual. It, okay, no, so it, it wasn't, it was, it wasn't uh, <coughs> as a result of... And yeah. oversight or no. faulty blocking or no. anything like that. No, um, I, I think he may not have been as um, precise in, in the blocking as I have seen elsewhere. Was he a very pictorial director? Did he like to create uh, stage pictures and tableaus, or did he no, prefer... No, he was more, more sound-oriented. Uh, mm -hmm. He really felt that the lines should be the star and the way you say the lines. Uh, uh, the visual element uh, was was important, but it was secondary. Yeah, but on the on the blocking, I, I remember uh, some of the rules that he made us um, um, adhere to. Uh, one was always face the audience, never face upstage. Never face upstage. Never face upstage. Now, if people did that uh, and he caught them, he'd he'd remonstrate. He said, "No, look, you've got to face the audience. You always had to." Kneel if if you were um, say kneel, uh, kneeling uh, um, uh, facing stage right for instance uh, you'd always kneel with your left yeah, knee down never the other way around and I noticed these days they didn't kneel with either mm -hmm. knee it doesn't seem to matter and they and they'll speak up stage and, and do all of these things which he considered to be absolute no nos so that reviewer that that you mentioned may have been right but. It would only be because the actors didn't follow the rules. Okay, so that they they apparently yeah. didn't follow yeah. the blocking yeah. that was set for them. And he, and he did want to get some motion in in the um, in the activity. He didn't want people just to stand still and and deliver their their lines. He didn't allow that. They were meant to they were meant to move and interact with each other. Now whether whether they did it to the extent that he wanted to is another question, mm -hmm. because. Um, he had difficulty always in in um, in the cast. The cast the cast was patchy. Uh, there were some people in there that were really good, others that were no good at all, really. Yeah. Uh, but he had to take them because they were the only ones available that were willing to do the the job. So uh, it was not consistently professional, but I think it is fair only to say it was professional with some imperfections in, in there.